Hello, it's Marco here, and in this UV Pack Master tutorial, I'm going to present the next advanced functionality of the packer, lock groups. Now, this is the UV map that we're going to be using throughout the tutorial. So uh, let's get started. Now, the lock groups functionality is available in the lock groups panel. Now, the lock groups are somewhat related to the lock overlapping functionality I presented in the previous tutorial. Now, for the record, using the lock overlapping feature, you can make the pack emerge overlapping islands. And that is to treat overlapping islands as if they were a single island, so they're not split up during the packing. Now using lock groups, you can also decide which islands will be locked together during the packing. But this is the contrary to the lock overlapping feature. So lock groups gives you full control over which islands are going to be locked together. So islands don't have to overlap each other. Look, let me just show you. So if I click show group assignments, we can see that by default, every island has a special N value assigned to it. Now the N value means that the island is not assigned to any lock group. Now keep in mind that the island with no group assigned will be processed in the usual way by the packer as if the functionality is disabled for him. Now if we want to lock a given set of islands during the packing, I simply need to assign them into the same lock group. So let's define the first lock group. Now I'm just gonna select these three just by pressing L and hovering over them. Oh my goodness. I did not know this until recently. And then I'm going to assign island to group. Now every lock group is identified by a number. And for this one, I'm going to use number one. So now over here on the left, you can see that they're in group one. Now I'm just gonna select a second group. Let's go deselect everything. This one, this one, and this one. And I'm gonna assign them to group number two. There we go, and assign island to group. And now we can see that they're in group two. Now I'm just gonna select all the islands and if I go show group assignment, we can see how these UVs are assigned to groups. So now that's all sorted, I'm just gonna click pack. And this is the result that we get. Now I just wanna show you that the lock groups functionality really worked during the packing. I'm just gonna select all our interested islands, which was this one and this and these two. Show group assignment. And you can see that the islands belonging to the same lock group were processed as a single island by the packer. So in other words, the packer maintained the relative position of the islands belonging to the group one, and also relative position of all the islands belonging to group two. So let me just quickly show you, control Z. We can see what the pattern is of these three. We can see the pattern of these three, and then you can directly see how they've been locked together. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to cover in this tutorial is the fact that you can actually define the lock groups using two different methods. Now, the first method is to use numbered groups. So this is the method that I used in the first part of the tutorial. Now I'll quickly show you a second method which uses a group schema. So let's enable the group schema. Now you can see that the UI has changed a little bit and I currently have no grouping schema created in this blend file. So let's create a new grouping schema and I'm just gonna rename it to my lock groups. Now in order to define the groups using the group schema, now I just need to press edit schema in editor. Boop. And now you can see that I've been moved into the grouping editor. So in this editor, you can see a list of groups currently defined in the schema. And for every newly created schema, it only has one defined group called G0. Now this is the default group and it's indicated by the letter D, D for default. So you just have to remember that at the very beginning, all the UV islands are always assigned to the default group. So if I were to just click show group assignment, there we go. So now we're gonna repeat the first process in the tutorial, but now we're gonna be using the group scheming for that. So plus plus, uh, this one is going to be AR for armor, and this one's going to be SW for sword. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna press L and select these ones. This is going to be a, our armor. So with the armor selected, assign islands to group, and then I'm going to select these, and this is going to be our sword, assign islands to the group. Now I can select everything and go show group assignment. We can see AR, SW, and everything else is the default. Now let's take that one step further. The logic of using group schema to define lock groups is simple, okay? All the islands are assigned to the default group and are not processed by the functionality. They're just gonna be processed in the usual way. Whereas the islands assigned to the same non-default group will be locked together during the packing. So let me demonstrate this. I am gonna change the main mode to single tile. And just so for the record, we have lock groups enabled and the groups defined by the my lock group schema. So that's the stuff that we just did. 
And now if we press pack, and that's it. So if we have a look at our three pieces, there's our armor. This will be our sword. And you can see that the islands belonging to the same non-default group were all locked together. So let's kind of like sum it up. What are the advantages of using the group schema to define groups over numbered groups? Well, I've already shown you one. And that's when using group schema, you can assign an attribute name to every group. So that setup can be more transparent than identifying every group by number. But it's not the only benefit. Now, one of the awesome things is that you can create many schema groups in a single blend file. In order to create another schema group, I just need to press the plus sign and we've created a new group. And then we can, you know, rename this one, other lock groups. And then we can click on this button and we can see both our groups. And so these two groups are independent of each other. So now if I were to go edit schema group in editor, bam, now we can go crazy down. Now, one of the other advantages of using the schema over numbers group is the fact that once defined, a grouping schema may be used in many different functionalities of the packer. For example, it can also be used in the defined stack groups and also defined a general grouping used in group-based packing modules like group to tiles, group together, group independently. So the general advantage is that you can make the group's assignments in a schema only once and after that, you can easily use the assignment in many places of the UV Packer UI, okay? So that's all I wanted to show you for this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and like and leave a comment. Let me know and have a great day.